Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining the Brain 101. We are going to go ahead and get started. It looks like we're right on top of the hour. Uh, thank you for joining today. My name is Matt Caton, and I am joined today by my friend and colleague, Jay Ofemi. Hey, guys, how's it going? I will be taking questions today, uh, so feel free to write in any questions that you might have for us, and uh, we will also do an interactive Q&A session after, uh, after Matt is done here. So feel free to write in and we're excited to get started. Great, so thanks everyone. And the purpose of today's webinar is really to give everyone an introduction into the Brain application. I am going to be covering the basics that you need to know uh, in order to use the Brain software. Now, um, again, as Jay mentioned, he'll be answering any questions you have. If you do want to know something specific about a more detailed feature, a more advanced feature of the brain, just type that into the question panel and we'll get to that in the interactive Q&A. But I'm gonna be covering the need to know basics of the application. Now, it's important to point out that no two brains think alike. So therefore, the application can be used in many different ways. And I'll be sharing many different features with you and it's really up to you to sort of cherry pick and decide which feature is gonna be best for you in your current environment. And you can always go back and change and modify how your brain was constructed, how data was connected or added into um, your brain database and if it needs to be moved or modified in any way, those adjustments can be made as your brain continues to grow and evolve. So you can create a free account on our website at www.thebrain.com and you can download a free copy of the brain. You'll have a free 30-day trial of the brain software. Now at the end of that 30 days, it's up to you to decide if you want to continue on using the free license uh, of the application. So you'll still have access to the brain database you've created you'll just be more limited in your feature set. Or you can purchase a license, a standalone pro desktop license, pro combo, allowing you to sync to the cloud and all the way up to Team Brain, where you share your brains collectively with other users and collaborate in the same database. So many license types are available and more information is available on our website. And when you download the brain and click on file, create brain, create that first brain. This is, um, well, you're, you're gonna see just a single thought in the very center of the brain. We'll create a new brain from scratch today. Uh, this is a, an existing sample brain that I have, and I'll share with you in a moment why I start with a sample brain of the software. But notice that it's divided into two main areas. We've got, um, on the left, we call this area the plex. And over on the right, this is the content area. And this can be made up of notes, web links, file attachments, um, emails, any type of, of digital data can be associated in some way with thoughts within your brain. And thoughts are the building blocks of the brains that we create. So you notice that thoughts are connected via links. And we're gonna talk about more about clicking through thoughts here in just a moment. But first I wanna share with you that you can rearrange the structure of the brain to best fit your needs. Um, when the brain starts up, depending on your screen real estate, you may have this set up. So let me just click this button on the bar that separates the plex from the content area. This is the over under view. And it's really up to you to decide which view is going to work best. Um, I can switch back to side by side and even flip flop so that the notes are over on the left the content area is on the right. And it's really just a matter of setting up your screen real estate. There's some buttons here to help you uh, minimize if you wanna go full screen with the Plex. And there's that little arrow icon I can just click to bring those notes back onto the screen. So really play around with that to, uh, to get the brain in an area that best fits your needs. You can move the brain up and down and you can even resize. There's no way of saying just because there's so many different types of screen real estate and, and, and resolutions and, and monitor configurations. Um, we don't say, all right, show, show me everything at a 14 point font or something of that nature. Instead, we have this text slider so you can really best fit the plaques or the notes 
um, to your current screen size or the screen real estate. If you've got a lot of thoughts viewing in the Plex at one time, you might want to quickly just adjust, move the Plex up and down to, to best fit that area. Okay, let's start clicking on some thoughts in this brain. Um, notice that any time I click on a thought, it brings that thought into the center of the Plex and displays all related information around it. So we're calling this the current active thought. And that's something that really differentiates the brain. Some people think of the brain as mind mapping software. Many other mind mapping applications that are out there, every node or, or item in the map is on the screen at one time. And you're just sort of uh, zooming in, but the other ones are minimized and still on the screen. I think that's, uh, I think of that as a pretty limiting view. You're limited in the number of items you can create. And um, with the brain's just current active thought and one generation away from the active thought on the screen at one time, it gives you focus. I'm currently looking at my clients. And these are my other departments that I'm interested in. If I just simply want to look at marketing, click the marketing and go just to the marketing area of the brain and down to the subcategories down below. So the thought that you've clicked on becomes the active thought. Up above, that's the parent thought. In other words, clients and all these other departments that I'm tracking and following are subcategories of eSolutions Consulting, my company. And down below are all of my the categories that I break up my clients into. So these are subcategories of clients, and we refer to these as child thoughts. So parent, active thought, and child thoughts down below. And of course, I can click down and navigate. So I'll say I want to take a look at my client's by industry, and then I break it down even further, communication, education clients, manufacturing, I'll go into media and entertainment, and here's a company I'm working with right now, Instant Dynamics Corporation. So Instant Dynamics is currently the active thought, and we're gonna spend some time in this particular view uh, talking about everything that we see on the screen, because things just got a little bit busier and a little bit more interesting. Once again, down below, we've got all the subcategories for instant dynamics. Up above, parent thoughts. But notice, there are five parent thoughts for instant dynamics. Now, this is something that really differentiates the brain from a typical file and folder structure. Um, if I were to create a folder called instant dynamics, that's my client I'm working with. Anything related with that client is gonna go into that folder and subdirectories, et cetera. But where do I store that folder? Does it go into my communications subdirectory of clients or media and entertainment? Uh, notice they're also a 10 year plus client. They're currently up for renewal here in the third quarter and they're a gold service level client. That's some really, really valuable and important information. With a file and folder structure, I'd have to pick and choose where I wanna put it uh, my instant dynamics folder. Now, of course, I could create shortcuts in multiple different directories. But once I get into the instant dynamics corporation folder, I lose sight of all the different relationships or subcategories that it, that it fell into. And with the brain, I don't lose that vision. I can see that they're a 10 year old client that are up for renewal, gold service level. So I certainly want to do my best with them to make sure that they sign on for another year and, uh, sign in a, into a new contract. And again, I'll show you as I'm creating a brain, how I'm um, actively, as the brain is being created thought by thought, always drawing links to other related pieces of information. So my brain evolves over time and shows all the different structures and relationships um, and categories related to the current active thought. Now over on the left, I have something called a jump thought. We haven't talked about these yet. Jump thought is related to the active thought, but it doesn't necessarily fit into any type of hierarchical structure. So in this scenario, it's people that are working on this account. Now here's Fred Baxter. When I mouse over Fred, you can see that he is the account lead for Instant Dynamics. Now I can click and drag Fred down below Instant Dynamics, making him a child bot. This doesn't make sense at all. Uh, Fred is not a subcategory of instant dynamics. He's now blending in with all my other active projects and um, ad campaigns and documentation going on with this client. Some argument could be made that instant dynamics should be a child thought of Fred since Fred is the account lead. 
Um, that's sort of his responsibility, as you can see by my label on the link between these two thoughts. Um, but this, this doesn't fit really my business model. Um, our employees don't own these companies. He doesn't own Instant Dynamics. It's a team effort, but uh, he's a very plays a very important role. So I choose to have him linked as a jump thought. This is one of those areas where you need to decide whatever's gonna work best for you, and you can change it moving forward. Do I create something as a jump thought, as a child, uh, as a parent thought? How does that structure work for me? You can always go back and modify and tweak as you continue to grow and evolve your brain. And of course, if I have a question for Instant Dynamics, I don't know the answer, I can click on Fred Baxter's thought. That makes Fred Baxter the current active thought in my brain. And in the notes over on the right, I've got his phone number, email, Twitter feed, uh, some just notes about Fred, meeting notes that we've had together. Fred isn't currently available, maybe. I can't get a hold of him. And I need to get that answer for my, my client. I can speak to someone else in his department. Notice in this area of the brain, I've created sort of an org chart of all the people, what their responsibilities are, who they report to, who reports to them, et cetera. So I can say Fred Baxter, while well, he's training Alex, uh, here's his assistant, Jana. She might know. If Jana is, does not know the answer I'm looking for, I'll go the opposite direction. I'm gonna check with the person that Fred reports to, which is Jim Johnson. So I can click on Jim's thought, and present him with this question for instant dynamics and, and uh, not lose a beat and get back to this client with the answer that they're looking for. So let's talk about a few more things that we see in the Plex area before we start talking about the uh, notes and file attachments. Notice that many of my links between thoughts have a label on them. A link label is a really great way. And once again, another feature of the brain that differentiates the brain software from storing your data in a file and folder system. I know the relationship between these two items. If you've got a folder for your client and inside are all these subfolders, uh, which subfolder is the most important one? Which one is due this week or due this month? Uh, which one has, uh, you know, subdirectories have contained phased out data or retired documents or what have you? And as you can see, I'm just simply labeling the relationship between links. It's great with people. I can see that Joe, he's actually an engineer in my company, but he's an advisor for the, our Instant Dynamics client. Uh, maybe he used to work for them. So he's got some insider information on sort of how they like their ad campaigns to work. Are they more trendy or more traditional, et cetera? There's Fred, obviously the account lead. All these projects that I'm working on with Instant Dynamics, Here's reach out. I'm choosing to put dates on them. Reach out is due September 20th, March 2023 is see the world. We're currently testing this team site one database for a project, et cetera. So I can double click any link between two thoughts to find that relationship. Um, this person reports to that person. This person is responsible for uh, this client or this document. So whatever uh, relationship or description of a link between two thoughts you need, you can modify it. Let's say this gets pushed all the way back to uh, December of 2021. So I'll just change the date. I like to color code my links. It's pretty basic. Um, you know, I use green for go and red for stop, that kind of thing with some links. So this is, isn't happening now until 2021. So I'll give that a red link so it just appears a little bit differently there in the uh, in the structure of the plaques and you can play around with those link labels um, on thoughts to further define your information and one more thing about navigating through a brain so far you've seen me just click from one thought to another but notice when i click on a thought if you keep your eye on this sort of scrolling list at the bottom every thought that i click on appends itself to this ongoing list. This is a breadcrumb trail. It's called the past thought list and it's the 200 most recently clicked on thoughts. So if I get sidetracked with a phone call or um, wander off to answer a couple of emails and come back to the project that I was working on and I've navigated away from that area in my brain, uh, but I need to give Jim Johnson a call, I can click on any recently activated thoughts. I need to get right back out to my marketing area just click and go right to that thought. 
So it becomes very, very helpful as your brain continues to, uh, once again, just grow and evolve over time. You'll find you'll use that past thought list quite frequently throughout the day. And if there's a thought that you are visiting often that's very important for you, let's say this Instant Dynamics Corporation, I really wanna make sure that they renew in the new year, help Fred as much as possible. So I'm visiting this thought just to uh, you know, tweak some documents or look up information for this client to make sure they're perfectly happy. And I'm visiting this thought multiple times throughout the day. I'm just gonna right click and select to create a pin. So pin is just a nice little shortcut in a very large brain for your keystone thoughts, thoughts that you are going to often on a daily basis. And now when I start working with another client and start clicking into another direction of my brain, my inventory manufacturing for uh, Harley Manufacturing, when I'm done and I need to get back to that instant dynamics, which I'm working on in all of my free time, I can just click right there on the, uh, on the pin. So a nice little shortcut that could be added if I'm not visiting this thought as often, I can remove the pin, et cetera. So you can also search within a brain as well. And the brain search actually utilizes your uh, Windows desktop search on a Windows machine or Spotlight on a Mac. Um, so your OS is actually doing the indexing for you and it's indexing all of the thought names and, and labels. What you see appears when I hover over a thought, that's a thought label. Um, all of the notes and even internal attachments or even external attachments. So Word documents that you're just linking to out on the X drive or what have you. I can do a search for the word power, for example. And hopefully there's not a lot of lag. It looks like there's, there's we're running into just a little bit today, but um, you'll find as you create your brain, you just type in a few letters and the search is very fast and responsive. All the thoughts that contain the word power, I can click to go right to this uh, PowerPoint, the power of the future. Or if I click on the search box again, I'm brought back to my most recently activated search and I can go down and look through all of my notes and attachments. So here's a rebuild task for a, looks like for a database that we're working on. And one of the rebuild tasks is to get a new power cord for this machine. Uh, so wherever the word power is showing up, oops, that's the report, sorry about that. Wherever the word power is showing up in the note or in the file attachment, so either internal or external. So here are my notes, my thoughts at the top, and down below all of my file attachments. So I've got a corporate file called, I choose eSolutions here attached to uh, this particular thought. That document, not the document title, but inside the, the document contains the, uh, the word power. So a very, very powerful search. And this brings me to the original reason I mentioned earlier. Let me jump back to Instant Dynamics Corporation. This is a great example with multiple attachments. I mentioned earlier, why do I use a sample brain uh, as the first brain that I present? Well, number one, I can add and delete content in this brain in a demo. But also, as you can see, as I've clicked through this brain, hopefully you've noticed when I click from uh, thought to thought, many of the thoughts have notes, phone numbers, emails, passwords, uh, documents, maybe there's contracts or invoices. There's a lot of proprietary information uh, that goes into a business brain. And that's exactly what my business brain has, is a lot of very, very important information, whether it's phone numbers or even passwords, I keep them all in my brain and all important uh, documents, uh, web pages that I need access to, et cetera, all goes into my brain. So therefore I use a sample brain for presentations. In just a moment, I'll jump into my personal brain to show you just a couple of features that I like, but I keep separate brains for my personal hobbies and interests as opposed to a um, my business brain, which is a separate brain database. There's no right or wrong there. You can create as many different brain databases as you'd like, you can merge them together later or segment them out into smaller topic specific brains um, if you'd like. Those are some more advanced features, but the capabilities are there. So this brain has a lot of documents inside. And as you can see on this one thought, I've got notes uh, for instant dynamics, just meaning notes contract. This is just a sample brain. So it's just some dummy content here. 
But let me share with you that the notes in the Brain 11 are based on Markdown. And Markdown is a way of formatting text um, in a way that when the Markdown uh, tags or coding is, is visible, the text is still readable. Um, so for example, if you're familiar with HTML, if I take a page and add some HTML to it, unless I'm in an HTML viewer, um, which is what they call a WYSIWYG, um, the coding is, is very complex and you can't actually just read the document because there's all these span tags and weird things like that. So regardless, the, uh, the markdown is, is not very intrusive, so you can still read the text. And notice when I click away from this text, the markdown tags or coding are no longer visible. So I can see bold text, access to hyperlinks, um, highlighting things, uh, some text is in italics or bold. When I click into edit, that's when I see all of the, the coding that went into making text bold or highlighted or underlined, etc. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Markdown and you don't care to learn Markdown at all, no worries, the buttons up above will, will take care of everything for you. So if I find something that I like and I wanna make this bold, I can select it and just click on the bold button or I could have manually gone in as I'm typing and I just do asterisk, asterisk and at the end of the word, add a few more to close it out and it makes that bold. So if you're familiar with Markdown, you can just type as you go. If not, use the buttons up above. If you want to become familiar with Markdown, click on the question mark, and that'll take you to our Markdown cheat sheet that we've got out on uh, our website at thebrain.com. So these are all the basics behind, you can see numbered lists, bulleted lists, check boxes, uh, et cetera. So all that information is available for you if you do want to know more about what can be done with the notes. Now the notes are intended to be easy to use, uh, just quick capture information. If you're looking for more complex, maybe you want tables, you can add uh, tables into notes, but you want your tables to be calculated cells that add up to figures for a monthly sales report, or you're adding fancy graphics for a wedding invitation. Um, those are the times when you would add a file attachment to a thought rather than trying to develop that fancy graphic or that fancy information right there in the basic notes tool that's built into the brain. So you can add file attachments, just click on the plus tab and select from a list of possible templates. If you don't see the template you're looking for, click on more, act more actions template help. This will give you all the instructions you need. It's gonna open a directory and anything you drop into that directory will appear in every brain you create as a potential template. So uh, cover letters for, for business proposals or something with your header and footers on it that you like for your company um, or a pre-filled out sales order form. Whatever the case may be, you can modify documents or you just installed an application that saves things as .xyz files, save a blank XYZ file in the brain. It just sends a signal out to your operating system to open that file in the operating system's default file uh, application for that file type. Um, and of course, we can attach web pages to documents as well. And the great thing about web pages, I'll share this with you in just a moment, is that they load up right here in the content area of the brain. The brain has its own built-in browser. And so I never need to leave the website. If I just wanna click and continue browsing around through this web page for this company, I can keep, continue on navigating and stay within the brain and not have to leave the, uh, the application. One of my favorite features for many reasons in the brain application. And before I start creating some new thoughts and adding attachments and documents, I'll share some more of my favorite features. I'm gonna jump over into my brain. Now this is my personal brain that I use for my own hobbies and interests. Usually when I open this brain up, I go right to the food area for some reason. I'm always looking up new recipes, things like that. Today I went to my woodworking area of the brain and uh, the brain, anytime you open a brain, it's gonna go to your last activated thought. So this was the thought that I was on when I was last in my brain. And this is just a project that I'm working on with my kids, building a cedar strip canoes and kayaks. 
And uh, so build a canoe, I can come down into um, a website that I frequent that has a lot of helpful information uh, called Ash Stillwater Boats. So I can click and again, navigate through that particular website. So my internet's running a little slow there. It just loads up there in the content area. And in the notes, you can see I've got an image here just as some inspiration. This is a canoe that I would like to build someday, the 17-foot angler. And that will be named the Laura Bloom Journey. We've started this process. I keep checklists of our progress. Um, I was sent, I purchased the plans. I need to print those out at X. So I've got a little link called and asked how much prints would be. I'm keeping track of other things that I need to build to make this happen, such as uh, specialized sawhorses for holding non right angle type, you know, boat frames and things like that. And when I made a purchase, I'm doing this all, I realized very quickly, I'm not trying to teach anyone how to build a canoe. But notice I can go down to my purchase area where I have purchase confirmation, transition or transaction ID number in case I didn't get the product that I paid for and what I paid for it, et cetera. A Gmail with a password that allowed me to download the files that I purchased, which are the plans for the canoe. So within two or three clicks, I've just shared with you emails, passwords, notes, uh, web pages, documents, graphics, what else? I think there are a few uh, a few other things that I that I happen to uh, to click past. I also have pricing information on you know copper wire and cedar board and types of glue, et cetera, all available within two or three clicks of of one another within the brain. So without the brain, where would I store this information? Well, here's a PDF file that would be stored in a folder somewhere, which is completely separate from the Gmail that contains my password that I need, I'm not gonna click on that because I don't want it to open up, but Gmail's open up right in the content window as well. Uh, purchase reference in case I need the tracking number or anything like that. Uh, notes on the web page. I love putting web content into the brain because it's number one, stored in context. I don't need my link to this canoe building company uh, in this long linear list in my browser bookmarks and favorites blending in with web pages that I follow for work, for other projects, for cooking, for family activities, et cetera. It's all stored right in context with the other pieces of related information within the brain. And I'm not always on the same machine, let alone the same browser. Here I'm on Google Chrome today. If I were to open up the web, if I logged in from my MacBook, I would be on Safari. So I would lose access to all those bookmarks and favorites that I had stored in just one browser on one machine. Um, so those are the few of the features that I wanted to share with you, um, features that I really, really rely on in, uh, in the, the brain application and use quite heavily. So now let's go ahead and that we've seen what the brain can do and can look like Let's actually create a new brain from scratch. I'm gonna click on file and select new brain. And when you create a new brain, sorry, I said I selected new window, didn't I? Let's close that. So file, create brain. Uh, when you create a new brain, I'll just call this the mat brain. It's going to randomly select one of our different themes that we have. Um, and uh, the theme can have, <laughs> this is what, sorry, uh, I create some of my own fun sort of goofy themes. This theme I'll just share with you was way back when we were alpha and beta testing version 11 of the brain. So there's sort of just a play on words with version 11 and a character named 11 in a TV show that I watch. I won't go any further, uh, but this is my 11 theme. Um, and as you can see, I was beating up the software as much as I could to try and uh, to try and break it back when we were alpha and beta testing. So just a fun little background that I created for a very specific project that I worked on. Uh, but here, we'll just switch over to the light blue. So many different themes and wallpapers. You can color code all of your different links and your text, whatever works best for you. Uh, the brain has a light mode and a dark mode, if that interests you. Um, and you can really set up a... Uh, sort of the flavor of the brain that you're creating. Are you creating a brain so you can keep track of your, uh, you know, hobbies and interests, vintage cars and cooking or what have you? 
Are you creating a brain for business and it's high tech and you want something very uh, sleek and elegant and modern? Totally up to you and all of that information, all of that is highly adjustable. So I'm starting off with just a single thought in the center of the brain. And notice that every thought has three gates, parent gate, a jump gate, and a child gate down below. So I'm gonna click and drag to create a new child thought. So an area for my business, and I click and drag an area for my personal information. So as if I was creating a new brain for me for the very first time and I wanted it all in one, whether it's business or personal uh, or whatever the case may be, it's all going into one brain. And under personal, I'll have areas for my family and friends. Now notice I like to click, drag, click, drag. I click and drag quite a lot to create new thoughts within the brain. But there's other options. I can right click on a thought and select from the context menu. So I'll create a child. You may have noticed there was a little F6 shortcut. I'll use that next. So an area for my woodworking. I'll click on F6. Uh, that's the keyboard shortcut for creating a child on a Windows machine. I forget what it is because I don't use a lot of keyboard shortcuts um, on Mac, but you'll see it show up there. And all those items in every context menu and drop down menus you see throughout the brain, um, all of those have the option to add a keyboard shortcut. We've got quite an extensive list for adding keyboard shortcuts. So those of you, I know you're out there that don't use the mouse, everything happens on the keyboard. You can continue on creating a brain, navigating and using and modifying a brain all with the keyboard without touching the mouse. So here's an area for my bikes. Now, another shortcut that I'll share with you, I'm gonna go into friends. This is the perfect example. I know my friends' names off the top of my head. I don't need to look it up in a document or, uh, or anything like that. So it's all in my head. I've got a lot of names that I keep track of, and I want an individual thought for every friend. So friends that I have that I go biking with, I can link there that I do woodworking with, I can link there. Friends of mine that, in whatever, enjoy the same hobbies that can be linked to that area of my brain. And the brain for me is my contact management system, so, or CRM system, um, phone numbers, emails, Twitters, Facebook, everything. All of that is in the notes for every friend in my, my real personal brain. So, Rather than click, drag, create over and over, which would be very tedious, I'll share with you now the semicolon trick. So Tom, semicolon, Jason, J. So notice I separated those with a semicolon. There I created, it looks like, eight individual thoughts at one time. The semicolon is a great time saver. If you have, for example, um, a uh, document of a parts list or a book you're reading or a syllabus for a class, you can get that data into your brain very, very quickly. If you can copy and paste the semicolon delineated list into that field, so I would just click and drag, and if I had a semicolon delineated list on my keyboard, paste it in, boom, I've created 200 thoughts at one time for off of a document for products that my company is researching. So very, very quick to populate areas with a semicolon. We also have many other import options available. Um, I won't have a chance, I don't think, to demo those today, uh, but you can import properly formatted Excel spreadsheets um, or uh, tab delineated Word documents or other mind mapping files. And just click on File, Import, and you can see, oh, that's Export, sorry. Clicking on the wrong buttons today. File, Import, all the different types of files and data that can be imported into a brain to populate it very quickly. So also in this area, I created one thought, August, that I misspelled, and there's a few mistakes with this thought. So let's spend some time here. First, I can click on any active thought to open up the thought properties display. You can also alt click on any thought on the screen to open up the um, uh, TPD, I always refer to it as thought properties display. 
And this is where we can modify sort of the look and feel of a thought. There's a lot you can do here, actually. Uh, first, fix the spelling. I'll add a label. Labels, I'll click away really quickly. Labels are what you see when you hover over a thought. So you can add additional context or information as a thought label. Um, you can also color code thoughts. Sometimes, you know, some people think, ah, oh, why do I need to color code a thought? A thought is a thought. Uh, sometimes you want a thought to stand out a little. There I give it some purple text on a, say, a light orange or kind of red background. Um, Sometimes in a group of thoughts, I want one thought to stand out more than the other. Maybe I've got 20 or 30 thoughts. You can have so many child thoughts that there's a scroll bar at the bottom. So these are all subcategories of some very important project. Um, and I don't wanna break them up. I want them all on the same level, but there's one that's more important than the rest. An easy way to identify that thought, you can add a thought type. That's a little bit more of an advanced feature, or I can just color code or add a graphic. I'll alt click and August, I'll select the stock icon. You may have noticed in my other brain, I have those zoomable icons of different types of uh, power tools and, and uh, parts or canoes or what have you. I just simply selected the option there to add an image and you get a nice zoomable icon if you've got a large image file. In this case, the brain has over uh, 2000 icons it's picking up the word cool, I think. So there's a refrigerator and a fan. Uh, so those are the suggestions that the brain is giving me for this thought. Cool guy, I could, yeah, you know, I'll just go ahead and select that. There was also a search box and I could go by category. If I wanna select a person icon, a food, a building, science, whatever the case may be. But there you can see that thought just kind of nicely stands out. Um, I don't typically need, you know, to be reminded of which friend is my best friend or what have you. But there you can see how you can modify a thought just to give it that extra oomph that makes it stand out. But also this thought is in the wrong area. August is actually the name of my son. And when I think of August, I think of family. So I want August linked up under the family thought. So rather than deleting August and recreating it under family, I can see the two on the screen at the same time. So I'm just gonna click and drag and link those two existing thoughts. So August now falls under both friends and family. August is a friend, but when I think of Augie, I think of family. So I'm actually gonna unlink this thought. You can right click on a link and select to unlink. Um, also, we can link to very distant thoughts. So family and friends were close by, they were still on the screen, so it was easy to click and drag and make that connection. Here's another example. If I go into business, so now we're going to start adding some documents, web pages. I am going to click on, uh, or I'll add thoughts for my business team, projects, and clients. And one of my business team members is, click and drag, uh, Brigitte. So notice I'm going to type in the letter B. Now, if I would continue on typing BR, it filters down the list um, until it shows me exactly if a thought matches whatever it is I've typed in so far. This is the brain's existing thought list and it's helping me to prevent duplication of thought names. I have one friend and colleague, her name is Brigitte, and I, that's the only Brigitte in the world that I know. I only want one thought for Brigitte. If I were to create one thought under team, and one thought under friends. I might go to the wrong thought in the future, looking for her phone number, or her husband's number. You know, we've got uh, plans to, to go to a softball game this weekend. I'm thinking of her, of her as a friend. Uh, I need to check in with her on the status of a project we're working on. I go down to business and team. I can still find the thought I'm looking for. So I'm gonna double click on Brigitte. And you can actually do these on the fly. So J also works with me. I type in the letter J, there's J. So I click and then come back to the search box, semicolon Shelly. That's an existing thought. I'll link there and semicolon Harlan, which is, does not exist yet. So nothing shows up in the existing thought list. So I've linked to those existing thoughts, regardless of how I'm thinking to, of that person, I can still find the content or the thought that I'm looking for. And as I said earlier, 
I keep phone numbers, email addresses, uh, meeting notes, everything that's going on with that person is li either linked in the brain or I've got the notes or documents or web page, what have you, over here on the right. Now, Jay is also going to be managing my new client, Alpha Corporation, and Alpha links up to clients. There's clients, double click. So once again, there's now three different ways, well, more than that, because I could do a search for Jay, but regardless, if I'm thinking Jay, my friend, Jay working on Alpha, I can still navigate and get to this thought. And for Alpha Corporation, I'm gonna have, uh, we're doing a new web design. So I'll be bringing some web pages in here. I've got some existing documents that I now wanna bring in. Let's start talking about that. So I'm gonna make the brain just a little bit smaller. And I am gonna start dragging and dropping existing documents into the brain. The default setting in the brain application for drag and drop is to make a copy of the file that you're dragging and dropping. So here's my corporate framework. I drag and drop, this is an Excel spreadsheet. Notice the document is still there out on my, I think this is on my D drive, no, my C drive. Uh, there's corporate framework in my brain. I made a copy of that file internally in my brain. That's the default setting. You can click on options and preferences. On a Mac, you would click on the brain preferences. And on the behavior tab, there are some very, very important settings here that you can play around with to get the brain working best for your environment. And I am, in this scenario, going to select I wanna start moving my drag and drop files into the brain. And that's the setting that I choose when I'm not on a demo. When I'm on a demo, I roll back to all the default settings of the brain application. When I'm working on my own brain, I like to move files into the brain. You can have the default be linking files into the brain. You can also override these settings with keyboard shortcuts. So it's really whatever be works best for your environment. I travel quite a bit when travel is a thing and my brain goes with me everywhere I go. So I need access to scripts, documents, uh, invoices, contracts, et cetera, and I all want all of that available in my brain. Internal attachments is what works for me. If you're working with a, with, in a business, you've got access to the you know, Z drive that 10 or 15 other people have access to, and those files there are being updated by other members of your team, and you want the most recent file when you go to launch your, materials research, a shortcut may work best. So here I'll use the keyboard shortcut. Remember, I changed my default. So if I were to drag and drop here, I'll grab design requirements, drag and drop, it disappears. I've moved that file into the brain. Materials research, drag, I don't drop yet. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key. That's my keyboard shortcut for making a shortcut. <laughs> so the file, as you can see, it didn't get moved. Uh, this is just a shortcut. Nothing got moved internally into the brain. Now, when I sync this brain to the cloud, all my internal attachments will go with the brain. Shortcuts, all I'm syncing is the path. So if I were to sync this to the cloud and download this brain on my Mac, on my laptop, the laptop doesn't know what a C drive, a Mac doesn't know what a C drive is. So this file is clearly not going to be there. When I go to launch this attachment, uh, it'll say the file could not be found. So it's really whatever works best for your environment. I've seen a lot of customers and, and brain users that say, all right, I've got a shortcut to the, the shared one, but I want my own local copy in case I'm ever offline. So I'm gonna drag and drop. And for this one, I'll hold down the, uh, whoops, I'll hold down the control key. There it is. Control is going to make a copy since my default setting is to move. Now I've got two attachments on this thought. Shortcut to the master copy out on the network, and I've got my own local, and I can even click here and uh, click on the pencil. That's local. Just so I can keep track. I know this is my local copy of an Excel a materials research document. This is the master copy of the materials research document. And once again, if I want to create a new file from scratch, I can click on that plus tab and select from my templates. Let's, before the end of the hour, I wanna really quickly need to bring in, oh, I wanna go back to alpha. I need to bring in some web pages. 
Web pages, once again, it's a very easy drag and drop process. So I'll make my browser really small here. But the cool thing is, and here I've got some sample web pages uh, that I really like. So um, I can drag and drop from the address bar in the browser of my choice. I use Chrome, you can drag and drop from IE, from Safari, Firefox, and the brain will rename the thought with some of the coding in the web page. It's looking for a title tag. So sometimes you might see a kind of weird name show up or one you don't understand. Uh, once again, you can just alt click, retype it. I don't need to know that this is Ishitani Furniture. It's just a furniture website. And maybe they've got a great e-commerce page. That's what I like about this website. Uh, so I'm gonna be bringing a lot of web pages into my brain. Here, I'll drag drop one more. Uh, this is a Trek bicycle or Trek and trail. Uh, sea kayaking, but they've got some really fun graphics on uh, on this particular site. That's what I like about this web page. So once again, I drag and drop, creates the new thought, and I just like that there's playable videos and graphics right here on the home page. So I'm just going to rename uh, videos and. So that makes the home page a little bit more interactive. So I added that information to the label. So now when I mouse over those thoughts in the brain, I can see what it is I liked about that, that particular web page. Um, so I'm sitting down with my client. I've got dozens of pages here and they tell me right away, look, we just wanted people to be able to buy our product. Forget about all these graphics and videos and things like that. Get them to the sales page. And so when I mouse, oh, well, videos, that's not what they're after. Oh, here's the page that I liked that had a really great, you know, purchasing order form checkout page, the Ishitani Furniture. So it loads that page up right there in the content window. Um, and then finally, I've taken this, I'll take this brain that I have created and I am going to, whoops, let's give myself a little more screen real estate. I am going to click on the sync icon. I'm going to sync this brain up to app.brain.com. Now, the reason why you would want, there's many reasons why you might want to sync a brain to the cloud. Number one, for online access. Um, so I can log into the brain website. I go to the brain website. And I let's give this a little more screen real estate. Click on log in. I think I'm already logged in takes me to my list of available brains, and I can open any brain that I've synced through the web client. So if I'm not on my machine or I uh, just quickly need to go online, here's the Matt brain. Last week I created the Matt Caton brain. This week it was just called the Matt brain. So we open up the Matt brain and we wanna go, maybe I need to give Jay a call really quickly. So I go into, I know he is managing my alpha client. Remember, however I happen to think about Jay, I can still find that thought. There's his phone number. I've got some questions about Alpha, the corporate framework, the documents are there, the web pages there are there, and it's all available in the web client online. So I don't even need to be on a machine where the brain is installed and I've downloaded a copy of my brain to that machine. Just log into the web. Notice I can create new thoughts. I can add notes, I can add attachments, upload files, link to URLs right here from the web client. And when I return to the brain and I sync, all the changes that I did online will show up here. If I make changes here, all the changes that I do here will sync and be available online. So I can download my brain on up to four different machines and access my brain from my traveling laptop, my home office machine, my desktop at the office, I can even access my brain from my iPhone. And I wanna share a feature with you here. Uh, usually I hold my phone up to say, here, see what I'm clicking on? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and mirror my screen right up here. Um, so 2303. So you're about to see on the screen what I'm seeing. There's my screen mirroring app, so let's minimize that and I am going to launch the brain. So I go back to my list and I click, there's a little bit of a lag time between 
what I'm seeing. I'm already seeing the Plex on my end and it's loading up there in the content window. So it's a little slow, but you can see I've got access to my entire brain as soon as this launches uh, right from my iPhone. So there, and of course, once again, it goes to the food area. So there it's on the bread uh, area. I'm baking a lot of bread at home these days. So I keep all my recipes in my brain. Here's my favorite rustic sourdough. So I can click and down below, I've got the web page that I found it on as well as my own notes. If I just really quickly want to look up the, uh, uh, look up the ingredients. You can see down below here, I've got links to notes, links to uh, file attachments. I can create new thoughts, delete them, brain box, a more advanced feature we didn't talk about today, or get back to my entire brain list. So everything that goes into your brain available on your iPhone as well. And with that, I have very, very quickly shared all the details of creating a brain, adding content to your brain, syncing it to the cloud, accessing it from multiple devices. Let's go ahead now. I see that Jay has been, uh, you all have been keeping Jay very, very busy uh, about um, uh, on the, uh, the question panel. So Jay, I'll send it over to you. Do we have any good questions that maybe you didn't get to or questions on something that you'd like me to demo today? Yeah, hey Matt, um, we did have a few questions here that's worth uh, kind of reviewing and, and going into a little bit more in depth. Great. Uh, yeah, so the first one we have here, um, someone asked when to create a new parent. Uh, it actually kind of rolls in with another question that someone else asked, which was uh, if you're dealing with many businesses or many companies, should you add them to one big brain? Should you create multiple small brains and right. them together? Um, so if you want to kind of briefly go over that. Absolutely. And again, that's a real, you know, that's a real personal choice. That's the decision that you as the user need to make. Uh, do I create a this information that I have and I need to start keeping track of, you know, company X, do I create that as its own new project brain, all the work that I'm doing with company X. And it really depends. Are you ever going to share that brain with employees from the company? If it's linked into your master brain and you also see all the information for your other clients. So alpha, beta, delta, gamma, et cetera. So if you've got very important information to other clients, it's not really shareable. I can't send this entire brain out to my, my contact at Alpha Corporation. I would need to segment that into smaller brain. I can do that, and here I'll share with you really quickly. I'm just gonna control click on Alpha, control click on the child thoughts. You can also go up to edit and say, I'm doing this, this is a much more advanced feature of the brain, so I'm going through this very quickly. Select related thoughts, so all related thoughts for four generations away. I think there's only a few more here under uh, new web design, but there I've copied that, this branch, this area of my brain. J is their main contact, so I'll make sure to include that thought as well. And now I can right click and copy those nine thoughts. I just, so I'm copied those onto my clipboard and I say file, create a brain, I'll call it customer brain. And once again, it's gonna select one of my random themes. Uh, so this one is sort of a dark mode theme. I'll change it to just classic dark blue, easy to see. I right click in the background and paste those nine thoughts. And if I'm doing that, I'm pasting everything, the notes, the file attachments, the graphics, color settings that I have on, on thoughts. And this one, I don't have many, but there's Jay, there's his contact information, all the documents my web pages, uh, notes, they all load up right there in the content window. So all the data on, that I copied from one brain to another. So there's, I've segmented part of a very large brain into a smaller topic specific brain. Another advanced feature, I want, it'll take us too long, but I could zip this up into a BRZ, a brain archive and import it into another brain. So that's how we merge brains together. So it's a personal choice. I can't give you a definite answer. Here's what you should do. Create a new brain. Here's what you should do. Stay in the existing brain. To your choice, decide what works best. I typically say to people, create one brain. It's very easy to segment it out, create one brain, see how that works for you. 
if you do decide at a later date, mm, darn it, this should have been its own brain, no problem. You can go back, copy those thoughts, get them into a separate brain and continue on and never, never miss a beat. You can see there, I just took everything I have in alpha, isn't much so far, but in a matter of seconds, I've got a whole new brain and now everything for alpha goes into this brain and I'll return back to my, my master brain. I don't want this information, any of it, in this brain, I'm managing it in a different brain now. So I'm gonna shift, right click. If I just right click, I'd get forget. I shift right click and I get the option to delete. And I am permanently deleting those thoughts from my brain. Now, before this brain sinks again, I can hit edit undo. I'm trying to share with you a bunch of different features really, really quickly. Uh, but as soon as it sinks, that clears off, uh, clears out the undo those thoughts have been permanently deleted. So I hope that helped and I hope that'll help you just decide uh, what you wanna do moving forward. But it is a very, very, very personal choice, but it can be modified at a later date. Jay? Great, great. Um, so yeah, another question that we had here, you used the, uh, the semicolon trick uh, a few times to, to create multiple thoughts. And we had a couple questions come in about sort of how what other tricks you can use while you're doing that to, to maybe categorize them or um, kind of differentiate between those thoughts uh you know i could say that there isn't too much you can do in that great thought dialogue uh text entry to to kind of categorize the thoughts but you could use you know the, the comma trick for example or the, the pipe trick for a label um so yeah. you know, quickly cover that as well sure sure as jay mentioned there's a pipe symbol right here and uh, that adds a label. So if I want a new client, let's say I've got a new client, but they're nonprofit, and I want to make sure that you know this is my my pro bono client that I'm that I'm working with, and I just want to remember that if I do share this this brain at a at a later date, let's say they're called Zed, and I hit the pipe symbol, which is just that little straight line above the enter key, I think on all keyboards, uh, and they are. Um, Nonprofit or not for profit? I'm not sure what the correct saying is these days, but that way I can just mouse over that thought and I get that label as I'm creating the thought. Also, as you're creating thoughts, Jay mentioned the comma trick. We can really get into a lot with the comma trick. There's also types and tags. We didn't talk about those today, but if you get more advanced, you can start playing around with types and tags that you can assign to thoughts as they're being created. The comma trick is really great, I think, for commonly named thoughts or commonly used thoughts. Let's say each one of these individual customers are going to have their own category for presentations that I give to this customer. So Delta, I have a sub, I have a child thought called presentations, and all the Delta presentations go there. Beta is getting the presentations thought. Gamma is getting it. What I would end up with is multiple thoughts as my client list grows and grows, hopefully into the hundreds and thousands, I would have hundreds and thousands of thoughts all named presentations in the same brain. That could get very cumbersome for the search results, for running reports, uh, or just seeing the thought show up in the past thought list and I have all these thoughts with the same name. You have to click on it to see in the Plex, presentations for who? Use the comma trick. So under Delta, I'll say, and you can add it at the beginning or the end, comma, presentations. Now, when the thought appears there under Delta, notice it just shows up as presentations. But the full thought name, if I were to mouse over or click on the thought, is Delta presentations. Uh, under Gamma, comma, presentations. If I forget, this is important to point out because some people are like, oh, I, I just learned about the comma trick. Now I've got to go in and rename all my thoughts. You don't have to rename everything. So I'll just say presentations. Oops, I forgot the comma. So I'm going to alt click on presentations. And if I just say comma, that doesn't work. Uh, the comma only appends the parent name as you're creating the thought. Um, if you've already created the thought, all you need to do is manually type in the parent name. So I manually type in beta, and now that's beta presentations. So when I do a search, when I see in the past thought list, 
it's clearly, I don't need to guess. That's delta presentations, gamma presentations, beta. Or if I do a search for the word pre, there they are, and I know exactly which one I want to go to. And uh, the comma trick can be multi-tiered. I don't use it too much, but I've seen brains out there, particularly legal brains. Then they've got a date, they've got a court hearing, and 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 then they've got uh, collected information, or I don't know all the legal uh, spiegel with it, but everything needs to say, you know, people versus X, Y, Z on, on every thought from here and all the way down. So I've got my 2019 beta presentations, my 2020 beta presentations, comma, 2020, semicolon, new thought, comma, uh, 2021, pipe, sim uh, pipe symbol, ideas. <laughs> so you can really play around with, with it a little bit. But by adding the comma, now I've got my beta presentations for 2020 and my beta presentation ideas as a label for 2021. So a couple of different things you can do with that uh, thought creation box to, to modify and make thoughts very, very unique. So Jay, maybe we've got time for just one more question if we've yeah, got one up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I actually, you know, I'm seeing a few few more advanced questions coming in. So I just want to kind of remind everyone, uh, please write into us at support at the brain.com if we don't get to your questions here on the on the webinar. Uh, and we can kind of go a little bit more in depth into some of these things that you're uh, curious about uh, regarding the brain. So uh, actually, if we can just go through uh, linking two brains together, I think that should oh, sure. be, that, that'd be a pretty uh, useful feature for us to kind of cover on the webinar here. But before you actually do that real quick, uh, someone, because you mentioned sync into the cloud, someone uh, asked about cloud security. So I just kind of wanted to give a quick, uh, you know, information, give a little bit of information about that. Um, sure, sure. So, yeah, so with our cloud services uh, at present, there is no facility for accessing, uh, there is no facility for accessing our uh, users' information, even by administrators uh, without the login information. So essentially your password, your login information is the only key that can access your data once it's on a server. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's also no third party vendors that can access that data. Uh, you know, file attachments and notes are encrypted on our server and your password is salted and hatched and can't be viewed by anyone. So your, your, your data is pretty secure on our server and our server is also pretty secure. Uh, it, it runs on Microsoft Azure. So uh, if you guys have uh, more questions about that or if you want to go in depth into the technical questions of how the brain works, please email us about that. And, yeah, yeah, so we're very proud of our, of our security. Uh, knock on wood, we've never had uh, any type of issues or, or cause for concern. And, and uh, we're very happy with the security of uh, keeping your brains encrypted on the upload, storage, and download, and, and keeping our your brains safe to your account. Yeah, so if you could just go over the uh, link and two brains, I think, uh, I think that's most of them. Okay, great, fantastic. So to merge two brains together, uh, there's two different ways you can link one brain to another brain, or you can merge. So there's sort of two different tiers there. Let's say I just want to link two brains. For whatever reason, this beta corporation is also very important to me because maybe they're building canoes or kayaks or something. So I'm going to link to this thought in my business brain from my recreational brain that I showed you earlier. Every thought within the brain has its own unique URL actually has two URLs, the local thought URL, and then if you're syncing this brain to the cloud, you've got the cloud URL as well. So I can right click on a thought and select, copy the local thought URL or the web thought URL. So in this scenario, I want the local thought URL to beta. Now I'm gonna close this brain and I am gonna jump over to my personal brain and I'll have to remember to delete this later. So build a canoe. Uh, is that where I want it? Sure. Right click and I am going to select paste web link. Creates a new thought and the thought name was the, the thought name of the in the other brain that I'm linking to, but it'll show up as paste web link. It is, it's just a link, uh, but the brain follows that simple rule. Open any attachment in its native application. So a native application for a brain URL is the brain application. I'm going to 
click to launch this attachment. And it's going to take me not only to the correct brain, but to a specific thought in that brain. So not touching anything on the keyboard, a new tab is gonna open up, there it is. And it takes me directly to that beta thought. So that's how we can link um, a thought in one brain to a thought in the other. You can actually do this back and forth. Then on beta, I could attach a link back over to my lower bloom brain if I want. Uh, so you can jump back and forth. Now, the other question, which it sounds like was, was uh, the answer here is geared towards the, the actual question, uh, to merge an entire brain. So let's start with uh, my customer brain, just because it's smaller. I can merge this brain into another brain. So customer brain, I'm gonna click on file, back up to brain archive. And you can do this with any brain you create. This is a really great habit to get into, uh, particularly if you're not syncing your brain to the cloud. By syncing your brain to the cloud, you've got an online copy. I've got copies of my brains on multiple different machines. So I don't make a BRZ backup too often. I know if my hard drive gets fried on this machine, I've got copies of my brain in other locations. But if you're not syncing, uh, or you just wanna be extra secure and keep a backup, or you wanna merge two brains, you need a BRZ, a brain archive. Two radio buttons. Uh, first one basically means it's password protected with my account info. If anyone gets their hands on this BRZ, they, they can't unlock it. Uh, allow anyone to restore is if I wanna share this BRZ with a friend, a colleague, I wanna include it in a project that I'm turning in and, and have my professor install the brain and see my BRZ. So a lot of different options there, but uh, I'm gonna keep locally. I'll change this and have this go right to my desktop, my customer brain BRZ. So there it is somewhere. Uh, let's minimize. Did I say backup? There it is, customer desktop, yeah. So I back it up. There, it just showed up. My customer brain BRZ, so you all can see. Here it is. Um, now, in another brain, let me just go to my list. You can click on this little round plus circle to open up your list of available brains. I've got some other test brains that I don't mind opening up at all. Um, I'll actually open up this iOS brain. This is just a test brain that I create. You can see one, two, three, four. I'm just running a few tests here. But in this brain is where I want to merge my customer brain. So now I've got this BRZ file and I select import. You can import a, a folder. You can import a, a text document, a properly formatted Excel spreadsheet. In this case, it's a BRZ that I'm importing select and I point out to my desktop, this customer brain, open. And this brain already, oh, uh, I was importing it as a new brain and the brain's telling me this brain already exists. No, I wanna import it into, I forgot to click the radio button. So I'm in importing it into my iOS brain. I click on import and confirm. And whenever you import a brain, it's gonna import in, and connect itself to the current active thought so there it is, right under this thought called four, it's customer brain, alpha, and all my data. So I've imported everything in brain A into brain B. I went through that feature very, very quickly. That's a more advanced feature of the application, but as you can see, it's there, it works. Uh, there's many different purposes or uh, use case scenarios for that feature, uh, but importing a brain, if you need any further assistance, as Jay mentioned, just send us a note to support at thebrain.com. We'll be happy to help you out with that. And also, I think probably every feature I've shared with you today, including some of these more advanced features, we've got individuals, uh, individual tutorials on our website. So we're always available support at thebrain.com. If you wanna learn more about the brain at your own pace, visit our website. We've got a full manual for the Brain 11, obviously. We also have video tutorials that are very topic specific on the tutorial page, as well as sample brains on the applications page that you can download. And here, I'll just open that up in the background. So on our website, uh, pretty much under the support category uh, or learn category rather, you can get to all our support documentation, video tutorials, and the applications where you can download sample BRZs 
and uh, open up those brain archives, uh, brains on very uh, multitude of different topics. Um, I did see, and I saw Jay already had answered it, a question about using the brain for educational purposes or, or teaching. We've got, um, uh, I thought we had a teaching and writing, maybe it's writing and creative projects. Uh, so a whole video to watch there, a writer's brain, a Shakespeare brain. I'm a sort of a Shakespeare nut. Uh, so my brain is self-learning education. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you're right. Yeah, self-learning and education. So that question came up. Can download the teacher and student brain. Obviously, there's a million different topics out there that we could have made this brain on, but you'll see some, uh, you know, uh, U.S. politics, I think there's a category for, uh, biology, um, some different things like that. So, and a very interesting structured brain. Use that brain just to kick the tires and play around with, or use that brain as the seed for your own brain. You can modify, delete, or add information as necessary in any one of those sample brains and watch a full hour, one hour demo on that brain. So with that, thank you, Jay. I think we've covered um, all of our questions that came in. And thank you. I saw you made it uh, very active for Jay today uh, and interactive for us during the QA. So thank you everyone for joining us. We're always available at supportatthebrain.com. If you have more questions, we look forward to hearing from you. I hope everyone out there is staying healthy, staying safe, uh, keep up the, the good spirits and, and the good work and uh, have a wonderful weekend. And as always, enjoy your brain. Thanks everyone, bye.